Ladies and gentlemen, NGOs are basically the face of American imperialism. Now, I know you might be thinking, what are you talking about, Ramon? Every forum's great. We agree. Every forum is not the type of NGO we are talking about. We are talking about NGOs like Lawyers for Human Rights and Gun Free South Africa. And with me is Byron in a poncho. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we need to bring you up to speed before we actually talk about this uh, this topic. So Kenny Kunenia is now the, uh, the sushi king of Johannesburg. I mean, the mayor of Johannesburg. And uh, one of the things that he has recently done is gone to all the Nigerians and the Somalians going, see that building over there? You know that building, that old disused building that you're selling drugs out of and using of prostitution? Yeah, I'm ripping it down. That way, when I rip it down, you can't sell drugs and use it for prostitution. And some human rights organizations have now suing Kenny on the basis that he's taking away their drug dens and their prostitution rings. And that's against their human rights, apparently. And they're trying to stop him from cleaning up the town. And Kenny said, and we quote, he said, I now understand why Robert Mugabe banned NGOs in Zimbabwe. And so we've looked at this and we're now thinking, hmm, I wonder if Kenny has caught a bit of a whiff of what's actually going on in South Africa, because we have made numerous videos just on the grift that is gun-free South Africa. That's a really easy place to start because the grift that goes on there it's absolutely unbelievable. And the first thing you need to know about Gun Free South Africa, it was started after the blacks took power in South Africa, right? So during apartheid, there was no need for Gun Free South Africa, no need for gun control. As soon as the ANC took over, oh, now there's Gun Free South Africa created in 1995, and they need want more gun control under a black government. I mean, it's a bit racist, Byron, between you and I, but we knew that already. But the point about Gun Free South Africa is not that they don't want guns for anyone else. The point of Gun Free South Africa is that it is a foreign-funded, non-governmental organization that basically has an outsized influence in the political and strategic future of South Africa without any democratic mandate whatsoever. If we cast our mind back to 2010, Gun Free South Africa was instrumental in passing the Firearms Control Act and instrumental more importantly, in getting amnesties for people who couldn't get licenses for their guns. In 2010, 42,000 weapons were handed in thanks to this amnesty by Gun Free South Africa. And Byron, I googled Gun Free South Africa recently. What is the latest headline you could find about them? Well, apparently Gun Free South Africa is like, well, that was wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to sue the police for doing what we asked them to do and getting the consequence we were told was going to happen, but we made them do anyway. Hmm. Yeah, curious, curious. And, and Gun Free South Africa does claim that, you know, since the Farms Control Act has been in place, crime has decreased in South Africa, uh, which is true, but it was decreasing before the Farms Control Act came in, in 2004. And in the last three years, crime has actually increased dramatically, irrespective of the Firearms Control Act. So even the claims of Gun Free South Africa and the objectives of Gun Free South Africa are complete bullshit. But most importantly, no one locally supports Gun Free South Africa. It is all foreign funders, European funders, American funders. And these people are trying to dictate policy of South Africa through this particular NGO with calamitous effects for the people of this country. It is very undemocratic we have to consider this a little bit further in that what gun free South Africa has managed to do is make gun rights harder for the average South African to get, which means that obviously the ability of the average citizen in the state now to defend themselves against state degradation and the crime rape is actually very difficult. So now that's had a material impact on people's lives, people that have been killed and died and had various livelihoods destroyed because of their lack of firearms, right? And it's also now these the control that the government has over the firearms industry means that livelihoods, shops, the ability to sell ammunition, exports, imports, taxes, all of that's been affected. All of this from an NGO that was basically funded by Europe and Australia, where they said, why don't you just copy our laws? No, very much so. Essentially, what Gun Free South Africa has done is prevent the grandmother in the township from owning the 38 special that her husband left her before he died. That woman is now a criminal for attempting to defend herself because she doesn't have 10,000 rand to put in a safe and to buy a new gun and to go through all the licensing procedures. 
So thanks to Gun Free South Africa, it is very difficult for poor people to defend themselves and are forced to become criminals by obtaining illegal firearms in order to defend themselves from people who already own illegal firearms because they are criminals. That's the essence of the definition. So that is how one organization has screwed up South Africa. But another one is the Lawyers for Human Rights. Now, as soon as there's human rights in the title of an NGO, or they stand for socio-economic justice, you know it is basically a front for the CIA. Not all of them, but most of them. Yes, so if you look at the Lawyers for Human Rights and then look at their funders page, it's very curious because the number of people that you see on it just starts your, your brain going, alarm bells, alarm bells. The first is Open Society Foundations. You know that old George Soros uh, lefty type think tank? tank next is a wraith foundation wow that's curious un refugees agency the un fund for victims of torture usa aid the southern africa trust ford foundation yeah these guys all look rather compromised do you find that a lot of the same ngos have the same sort of funders from the same sources of funds and it's often taxpayers' money from European or American countries, which basically wants a color revolution in South Africa. Not the violent sorts, but the sort of slow strategic litigation that changes the policy direction of the country based on the litigation provided by these people. These people have changed the way evictions work. They've changed the way the gun rights and gun laws work. They've changed the way a lot of things work in this country and basically made a lot of things illegal which would take this country forward yeah but here i hear you ladies and gentlemen saying oh we don't believe you that's that human rights are a good thing how can you be against human rights we'd agree human rights the protection of the sanctity of the family and right to bodily integrity all that kind of stuff that's that's great let's actually look at what lawyers for human rights have actually gone and done forms of cases on how about this one concord slams racism hmm un treaty on business vital for economic activity hmm you mean when they say un treaty means un regulation of business yeah that old state control bullshit uh, okay court victory for transgenderism okay uh how about the illegal immigrants can't send them home uh, what about rights for, for criminals and prisoners so that they get treated nicely? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, liberals love humanity, but they hate actual humans. A lot of these NGOs focus on basically the scum of the earth and protect them as much as possible from consequences of their behavior. And the rest of us, the taxpayers, the law-abiding citizens of the country, have to sit back and see this happen right before our eyes without any real recourse because once the law is set in the constitutional court the law is set there's nothing we can do but the consequences are felt for generations to come gun free SA is a good example of that in terms of the crime rates and lawyers for human rights i mean who knows where it'll end up you know unisex bathrooms for everyone at every single school and nursery school maybe yeah so ladies and gentlemen you may look at this and go ah you guys are being hyperbolic come on it's not that bad you know, these guys are at least got their good hearts in the right place. Except they don't. Because a lot of this is just a grift. Let's use the example of Gun-Free South Africa because it's such an easy one to do. Their former chairperson was Adele. Adele worked for the Institute of Security Studies. Whenever you saw a news headline, whenever it requoted somebody, it would say, we are somebody at the Institute of Security Studies. And they said, guns are bad. And then we asked Adele as part of Gun Free South Africa. And she said, I agree, guns are bad. So what you really realized is that the people pushing the narrative in the country were the same people. They made it look like there was more than one of them, but it was the same people belonging to the same organizations just spread across numerous NGOs, all making it look like there was manufactured consent, right? They had lots of people pushing this stuff forward. Now, what does that actually mean to the average South African? Well, the average South African gets the news from the news, the mainstream media, and they read it. And so there's a degree of hard, hard degree of propaganda going on there where they basically sit there going, well, guns must be bad because I read it in a news article. And they wouldn't lie, would they? I mean, look, numerous people are saying the same thing. 
And so what they do is they actually manufacture the scenario or the narrative around a specific topic. And that's why we to use the topic of racism. The Institute of Race Relations tells us that racism is not as much of an issue in South Africa as the average individual thinks. But when you read the news, it's all that consumes the average South African, right? Why? Because the lawyers for human rights are sitting there telling us that racism is a big issue. And that's why they're funding cases. So it pits it right in front of the eyes of the average South African and makes it seem like, well, this is legit. And in doing so, they change the complete structure of the narrative in the country. And not in a positive way. No, but it's more far more nefarious than this. These NGOs are forcing the constitutional court to develop jurisprudence of its own, which it's not supposed to do, but they are forced to do so based on the court cases going ahead. And secondly, and most importantly, it, it really screws up with the sovereignty of the nation. Now, listen, we're not ANC acolytes, of course, in morning shot, but we still think the democratic process and people voting for who they want in parliament is a very important part of being a South African. It cannot be thwarted by internationally funded NGOs, whether it is green energy, which we know is bullshit, whether it is gun-free South Africa, which is bullshit, whether it is transgender bathrooms in nursery schools, which we know is bullshit, South African people don't want any of this. The fact that it's in the news, the fact that there are court cases about it, the fact that there is laws being promulgated about these things, it is all based on manufactured consent from funders who don't live in this country. And that alone disqualifies them from having any sort of influential role in this country. I'm not saying they need to be guillotined at dawn at Church Square, but we should understand their power and limit it as much as possible. 